I'm going to build this cabinet with my son Walter, but I'll get started on my own by breaking down this full sheet of plywood. The ceilings in the barn are 8 feet 2 inches high and the light fixtures hang down 3 inches, so moving a full sheet around always requires a bit of a plywood dance. When I'm breaking down a full sheet of plywood, I make the first rips a little bit heavy, and then I'll cut the parts to size when the plywood's smaller, lighter, and easier to handle. After rough cutting the sides to length, I'll use the table saw to make a half inch rabbit to accept the back of the cabinet. I'm using half inch plywood for the back of this cabinet because this cabinet doesn't have a face frame and the half inch back will add a little more support. I'm building this cabinet for my son Walter and now that most of the rips are done, he's joined me to help out and learn a little bit about woodworking. Since we're making all the cuts on the crosscut sled, the first step is to just take a little bit off. That's called squaring up the edge. You're going to square up the one edge, and then what I like to do is after I square that edge up, I'll put it over here, and I know that the edge that's hanging off of the cabinet here is square. So I'll do all three boards, taking about a sixteenth of an inch off, just a little bit, stacking them over there, then we'll set up a stop block and cut all the shelves to size. The reason I use my crosscut sled over my miter saw for finished cuts is my miter saw is often out of square and has developed a bit of a blade deflection. And now you're going to use a stop block. Take this, this goes here, right, so everything will be the same. What you want to remember not to do is don't slam it into the stop block or it'll move it. Mm. You just touch it, touch the stop block like that. I made this crosscut sled a few years ago and it's become the most used jig in my shop. If you want to build it, I'll put a link to the project video in the description below. Okay, so now we're going to mark where the shelves go. We've got the inside of the cabinet facing up. It's clamped together and we can just mark both sides at 25 because we've already figured out the measurements. Then we'll take a straight edge and just connect those lines. This is an old school Craig jig. They don't make this one anymore. Everybody always asks about it. It's pneumatic, so it operates off the air compressor. That's going to clamp your workpiece in place, and then you're going to use the drill and drill down to the stop. When I'm building a piece of furniture, I like to have a big piece of plywood on my work table because as the piece gets bigger and heavier, I can move the whole thing around. Plus, it's nice to have something straight to reference off of. Usually, I'll use a piece of half-inch MDF, but since I don't have that, we're going to just use this other uh, half of the sheet of plywood. Grab one of those shelves. Re <laughs> You're going to have to remember, too, what's the bottom of the shelf and what's the top of the shelf. What's the top of the shelf? Yeah, you have to remember these things as you're building because it's easy to make screw-ups. So we're going to hold everything together with a clamp and that will let us screw the parts together. Okay, so now that we've got the box together, we'll take a measurement for the back which is 19 and a half. We're going to cut this to size, but before we attach it, I'm going to cut a big groove in the back for all the cables. Mm -hmm. Instead of just a singular hole, we'll cut a groove in the back. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and cut it to size, cut the groove, and then we can start finishing it. All right, sounds good. Okay, so now the cabinet is mostly put together, the back's ready to get finished. 
The next step is to cover the edge of the plywood. There's a couple ways to do that. You could use iron on edge banding, but for this we're going to make trim. And since I have a piece of cedar here, that's what we're going to make it out of. So I'm going to attach this one piece of trim, then I'll leave you alone and you can film and trim the rest of the cabinet. This is a little trick, you can get a nice bead of glue by using your finger as a guide. See how the glue line is right in the middle? Mm -hmm. You don't need to use a ton of glue. And anytime you use glue, you should have a wet rag next to you so you can clean it up if it squeezes out. Make sure you're flush at that end. Work your way down here, use the pencil. All right, I'm flush here. Okay, then work your way down. Come down here, make a pencil line. Remember, hold it at the curve. That'll work, go ahead. Just don't hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. Just don't put your fingers anywhere near that saw, you'll be fine. Yeah, I don't. I got it. Yeah, you can go across grain, but then finish going with the grain. Mm -hmm. I painted the back of the cabinet with one coat of primer and two coats of a semi-gloss latex paint. And Walter finished the cabinet with two coats of water-based polyurethane. We allowed the paint and finish to dry overnight, and the following day I attached the back with one-inch screws. How's that thing working out? Nice. It's good. Walter around? Yeah. <clears throat> well, maybe I'll play a tune. You guys got a guitar I can use? Yeah, right All there. Right, let's go for it. <laughs> Cut it out, Michael. Okay, let's play something. Here we go. <laughs> 